This is the Glasshouse Mountains. It's the home of Tough Tracks. And this is an almost brand new vehicle with about 2,000 kilometers on the clock. What a little animal. How good does this brand new Ranger look? Now, of course, it's a fourth gen, brand new Ford Ranger that's fully kitted up. Now, I'm very excited to test this one out in the scrub today because I've only ever driven a stock one. Now, if you remember back to our Ute of the Year, we pushed these things through their paces and they came out number one in our Ute of the Year test against the Hilux, the D-Max, the Triton, you name it. Very capable off-road, super comfortable, had a lot of driver assist technology which helped it off-road. Now, of course, it did have its limitations, mainly so the approach, departure, ramp over angle. It lacked a little bit in the clearance, but that's what you sort of expect from a stock vehicle. However, this next-gen Ranger is anything but stock. As you can see, it's fully modified. It's got bar work all around. It's got suspension, bigger tires. It's fully kitted out. I'd in fact, probably go as far to say it's one of the most modified and accessorized next-gen ranges in the country right now. So when TJM gave me the keys and I had the opportunity to take it in the bush, I absolutely jumped at it. But before I do that and get it all muddy, I want to show you guys around because it's a pretty darn cool vehicle. Well, first up, let's take a look at this bull bar because I reckon it really changes the whole look of these next-gen Rangers and makes them look so tough and aggressive, built for off-road purpose. But of course, it looks the part as well. It's been color-coded and it has all your functionality from factory, all your radar, your parking sensors integrated into this bar. So you don't lose anything you have from factory. But of course, it's not all about looks. Now, if you have a look at the angles of this bar, you can tell that the approach angle has been improved. Now, one of the limitations, of course, with a factory next-gen Ranger was that huge front bumper that seemed to get in the way a lot when you're off-road. Now, these angles have improved for off-road, but it's also got built-in recovery points that are rated on both sides here. It's got high lift jack mounts here. It's hiding a nine and a half thousand pound winch, spotlights, all your provisions for everything and all the sorts of accessories you'll wanna to add to the front of your vehicle. Just little things like this on the front bar where your number plate actually locks in. So if you're going through water crossings, you're not gonna lose it. It's a little thing, but it's super clever. Come down to the side of the vehicle, you see it's got brush bars leading down to these side steps right here. One of the issues we did find with the stock Ranger was the ramp over angle. It's quite a long wheelbase on these Rangers and it did get hung up a lot. But as you can see, this vehicle has bigger tires and a two inch lift as well. So that's gonna help with that ramp over angle. And with all the bar work around it, well, I reckon we can push it pretty hard today. You'll also notice it's got a really slick looking aero class canopy fitted. Now it's got a couple of neat functions like this push buttons on each side and the rear to fully open and get access to inside the canopy. It's a neat little function that I think is really, really handy. It's also got central locking as well. So when you go to the shops, press a button, the whole canopy locks and protects all your valuables. So again, it's not just practical, but it looks the part as well. Now that we've come around to the rear of the vehicle, you'll notice this rear bar. It's a new one from TJM, it looks the part, but just like all their products, there's a lot of functionality behind it as well. Now, as we come down here, it's the first thing you're gonna notice is the protection that it offers the rear of this vehicle. One of the things I found about driving a stock one of these is that rear bumper as well was quite vulnerable off-road. This bar has actually improved the departure angle, so when you're coming down off rock steps and things like that, you're not too worried about this hitting a rock because it's nice and protected down here. It's also got some tube that's been bolted on the side here to further protect that tub, so both the rear and the sides of the tub are protected. It's got a tow hitch that's integrated in here as well. Today we've got an off-road recovery point because we are heading off-road in it. You'll notice it's also got all your factory parking sensors in the back here. Now the rear radar is in the back of these tail lights, so that doesn't need to get relocated. So again, you get everything that you normally get with a stock vehicle, but you get the added protection of bar work right around here, so it's built for off-road. Now I'm gonna show you one more thing around this side of the vehicle before we do take it off-road. You'll notice it's got a Rhino backbone system as well as a platform rack. Now it's holding a shovel, front light bar, and of course, set of Max tracks. Now hopefully we don't need to use those later on in the day. Now normally, I'd be a little bit nervous taking such a brand new vehicle off-road. But the only reason I've got a little bit of confidence today is because I've got bar work all around. So if I do, you know, come across one of these rock steps which I'm about to drop off now, and I do hear a bit of a scrape, it's at least hitting the bar work or the bash plates, which is designed to do so. So all the vitals of this vehicle is actually going to be quite protected. But so far, <laughs> so good. It's amazing what the extra clearance does to this vehicle. Just flexes its way down through these ruts, wheels off the ground, it doesn't really matter. It's got the traction and the protection to get through unscathed. It's one thing going downhill, but to turn around and come back up with huge big ruts and rock steps, well, <laughs> that's gonna be quite the challenge. 
I don't think I line quite well here, but I'm not going to purposely try and put the vehicle in a position where the suspension is really unloaded. It might lift tires, and I think we'll be able to make it through pretty unscathed. just nosed it up that rock step. I mean, if this vehicle didn't have a front bar, it would have completely taken the front bumper out. But as you can hear, not a single scratch, which is cool. Look at that. It's a little rock crawler. <laughs> How cool is that? I'm so surprised because the standard Ford Ranger that I drove in our Ute of the Year test pretty much scraped its way through. Now, it was a fantastic vehicle, very, very capable, but its clearance, approach angle, ramp over, and of course, departure angle were letting the vehicle down a little bit. And that's the only faults that we could really find in the thing. And as you can hear, this one here is just does all the same things that it's very capable off-road, yet it doesn't scrape. The vehicle's protected. And we've got the confidence to drive some pretty cool tracks. One of the things you'll notice when you first jump in a next-gen Ranger is that it does have a lot of technology, and in particular, a lot of technology that assists the driver, not just on the road, though, off the road. So it's got downhill assist, which I was able to use today. Um, it's also got a really tricky traction control that works a treat, as well as a built-in factory rear locker. Now, the cool thing is it is quite easy to navigate around this vehicle. I can get in here and find out where everything is pretty quick. Now the other cool thing as well, and this annoys me with modern vehicles, puts me off a lot in fact, but you tend to find when you go off road, a lot of the sensors will start to overreact when you get too close to a rock or too close to a tree, which you tend to do when you're driving in low range, but the vehicle doesn't know that you're in control, so it starts to make all these sort of noises and starts to freak out, but it's very easy to turn everything off in the range. So all of that sort of technology, I actually think it's, it helps the vehicle, it doesn't hinder it. How's this? This is a nasty looking little bog hole. Something tells me the colour of this vehicle is about to change. <laughs> Too easy. I've been lucky enough to steer this Ranger on some pretty challenging tracks, something you wouldn't typically take a new modern vehicle on. And TJM have somehow trusted me with the keys. And that's, I think, because it's covered in bar work. It's got underbody protection. It's raised up, so it's got a little bit more clearance, got bigger tires and all that sort of jazz. So the end result is you've got a vehicle that's a little bit more capable and also protected as well. So even though they know the way that I typically drive, well, they've got the confidence that the vehicle's gonna come back in one piece goes to show good quality gear on the vehicle. It's sort of like cheap insurance, really. Well, we're coming up to a cool little rock step here. Now, you could pick a stack of different lines, but I'll tell you one thing for sure, you want to get it right, because if not, you're definitely going to do some damage. Not to mention, give the other side of this vehicle a good touch up. But then again, it does have bar work and bash plates on there, so even if I pick the wrong line, you should be okay. All right, up we go. It'd be amiss of me, not to mention the fact that this has 600 newton meters of torque, and you can really feel the power in this next-gen Ranger. What that means is that you know, you're out on some dirt roads like I am today, but you might find yourself, you've got a caravan on the back or a camper trailer. Well, you know it's gonna have plenty of power and torque that it's gonna to tow it easy all around Australia. And that's what you want when you've got a vehicle that you're setting out for tour and you start adding accessories like your bull bar, your canopies maybe, you know, all your bar work. It's gonna to start to add a lot of weight to a vehicle. It can really start to make it sluggish. Then you go and chuck a camper trailer or a caravan on the back and then it's like a huge anchor for the back of the vehicle. Now. These next-gen Rangers, they go like the clappers. Trust me, if you get a chance to drive one, you're gonna have a lot of fun. Well, I've got to be honest with you guys, I've had an absolute ball today, and I'm quite surprised where I've been able to steer this Ranger. Keep in mind, this is the Glasshouse Mountains. It's the home of tough tracks, and this is an almost brand new vehicle with about 2,000 kilometers on the clock. The other thing I'm pretty impressed about is that TJM really do stand behind their products, so much so, in fact, 
that they've given me the keys and trusted me with this Ranger. Now, of course, there's a bit of mud on there, there's a couple of pin scrops on the bar work, but the body is untouched. I mean, it's, it's kept protected. And that's exactly what this gear is supposed to do. It's supposed to protect your vehicle and allow you to take the places like I've just taken this Ranger. Now, would I own one of these? That's the big question, I suppose, you're probably thinking right now. And I've got to say, it's really grown on me after today. Obviously, I've, I've driven a couple of standard ones and I've certainly found their limitations. But once you start to get a few aftermarket goodies on a vehicle like this, you start to get the confidence of taking to places you otherwise wouldn't. Now, probably the next mods I'd do on a vehicle such as this one is maybe fit it out with some drawers, put a trick 12 volt system, maybe a water tank. You know exactly what I'm thinking, aren't you? Make it a really tough tourer. So this is a turnkey go anywhere vehicle. You can take it up to Cape York, across the desert, down through the high country. Heck, you can do a few laps of Australia, no worries at all. You can do it in comfort as well. So would I own one? Absolutely. I was got to convince TJM to give me the keys to this one for just a little bit longer. Anyway, that's enough for me. I'll see you next time on 4Drive 24-7.